Easy guys, Dom here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So in this video, we're taking a look at Back for Blood, and the question is, how bad is this game? Well, we'll discuss that as we go through the video. So the game is currently in its open beta phase and comes from the developers behind the Left 4 Dead series. So those of you who like Left 4 Dead, including myself, may get some enjoyment out of this game because it does follow the pretty much same structure as the Left 4 Dead games and there is also elements in this from something like World War Z if you've played World War Z and I know World War Z was probably heavily influenced by the Left 4 Dead series but it was also a really good game. It does feel very similar to that and I, I guess you know the thing is there's a saying that if it it's not broke, don't fix it, you know, and Left 4 Dead was very, very popular and people have been waiting for a follow up for a long time. The structure of this is very similar where you've got the acts that are broken up into different sections or chapters, whichever way you want to look at it, where you have to get through each level, making it to a safe area where you can then spend copper coins that you found throughout the level to be able to upgrade attachments and weapons and buy new usable items like med kits and different explosive devices and things like that just to kind of help you get through the level. I kind of found the structure of each level okay you know the map design or level design is quite cool I guess you know there's uh, a lot of sections that are quite fun and vary in difficulty as you go through sometimes you'll have sections where hordes are called in and you've got to kind of hunker down and survive the horde coming in until they're dead before you can move on and I did like that I did like the varying level of challenge and and I did also notice that there are the difficulty settings that can be adjusted so if you want more of a challenge and you want things like friendly fire on which can make a massive difference to how this plays out because if you're playing it on the standard survivor setting yes the challenge is pretty difficult with some of the areas within this first act and some of the enemies that you get but at the moment there's no friendly fire and i think having that challenge of friendly fire can really change how you play the game because at the moment everyone just kind of shoots right through you if there's these ridden which are kind of like zombies really in front of you then people just shoot through you but if you're playing on that harder difficulty then you can't do that so there is a more tactical setting so to speak where you've really got to be careful about how you place your shots because otherwise you're going to be damaging your teammates and I think that could really really change the feel of the game. Now I have to say things like the card system that you get in the game where you build this card deck which give you buffs to your characters and you can choose a card to start with and as you progress through each level you can choose a different card to add to that so as you progress your kind of skills get a little bit more buffed you know may that be more stamina or being able to have more health and things like that. I like that system as well that was quite good and I did like the little supply rooms that you can unlock you find throughout the maps if you've got a toolkit on you so you can only unlock these doors if you've got a toolkit and I did like that because usually you've got health some decent amount of copper coins in those rooms and maybe some attachments for your weapons that are better than the ones you use and amongst other things so there are things to explore and keep an eye out for but there's also bonuses that you can earn throughout each of the levels where may that be you've got to find blood samples and take them to the, the safe area at the end of the level or maybe a challenge where you whole team have got to get to the end of the level without dying or without even one of them dying to be able to get bonus copper at the end of the level to spend then before you start the next section. I kind of did like how that was implemented into the game. So let's talk about the characters and the enemies at this point. So I have to say that the character design or the characters in general that you can play as are relatively generic and not very diverse. I have to say that because that's just how I feel. They don't look no different to how maybe characters would in any other games. But, you know, maybe that's just the style they've gone for and maybe 
it's not really a massive thing. Maybe people don't care too much about what their character looks like. And, you know, I guess that's just really down to my personal choice. I might have wanted to have seen some character customization where you can change the look of your character, maybe change the color of their skin and their, their facial features and the type of clothing they're wearing. But who knows, as the game progresses, there might be elements that you can unlock. I'm sure there's probably going to be things like different clothing skins, maybe. And this is a maybe because, you know, I've not really looked too deep into that side of things. And I know there are a few different things that you can change in the game, such as kind of like your name plate and emblem and things like that, which is quite cool of duty, you know, how you can kind of change what used to be a calling card in uh, Call of Duty for kind of like your little name background and things like that and your emblem. Um, you can unlock new things like that using your supply lines and the supply lines you kind of find at, at the starter point in, in Fort Hope where you can unlock new cards to use by spending supply line points, which you'll accrue just from completing each section of the act that you're playing and you go and spend them at then Fort Hope at the beginning. So there are a few things to look at kind of upgrading and developing as you play through the game. But I just don't know if there's going to be enough with that to kind of keep me invested or not. But after only playing the first act, I don't know how many acts is going to be in the final game. So that's kind of hard for me to judge. Enemy design, I have to say, is also relatively generic to a certain extent because it's the enemies are not really anything we've not seen before in any of these types of games you know they're not really anything where you go wow look at that that's what's that thing you know what i mean it's just well look like zombies with glowing eyes you know it's like the type of enemies really you've seen in any other zombie game really like call of duty or uh state of decay is an example you know these zombies or ridden as they're called in this have the glowing eyes and there's a few different reskins of these enemies, but they all look relatively generic personally, including some of the special monsters. They're not really anything that great. I'm just hoping as the acts progress that there are new enemy designs with different attacks and things like that, because if they're the same enemies throughout the whole game, it might get a little bit boring on the eye, so to speak. I mean, again, some people might not mind about that because at the end of the day, this is just a shooter it's just for jumping in and having a bit of fun and just shooting zombies really and when it comes to shooting zombies this is what the game does really really well i have to say the gun play is really really good the guns feel responsive and snappy and the sound design is really good you know not just with the guns but in general you know the sound effects the monster sounds the environmental sounds the music all brings the package together and sounds really good some of the voice acting coming from the survivors that you play as or cleaners whatever they're called can be a little bit cheesy but i kind of think that cheesy dialogue is designed that way to kind of feel like maybe a b rated horror flick you know and you know a lot of the the zombie genre was really started out in kind of like the b movie genre so you know trying to kind of maybe follow that vibe of getting a little bit of that zombie horror b flick in there could be where they're coming from with that kind of cheesy voiceovers now i'm not too sure about kind of like the story you get a little bit of story as you're going through but i think that might be maybe a cut scene that was missing in the beta that you'd probably get in the full game to kind of show you what's happened up to this point without that at the moment the story doesn't really make a lot of sense to me although I guess you are just trying to survive and uh, make it to safe areas. But if at any point you kind of get a little bit bored with just the mindless killing of riddens, then there is a versus mode. And I did try this out a little bit. And it is a game mode where one team will be cleaners and they have to try and survive for the longest time possible while the other team play as the ridden and they're able to choose different special enemy types to be thrown into the mix which you will control and you will have to try and take out the cleaners i didn't really get into this game mode that much i played a little bit of it but i just couldn't get into it it just didn't really feel right to me just something I couldn't put my finger on. I'm sure there'll be people out there that enjoy this game mode and it is something different to play. But for me, I just, yeah, I couldn't get into it and I didn't really enjoy it that much, if I'm honest. 
But overall, I have to say, I've been having a lot of fun playing the game. I do know that the game is relatively expensive. Uh, at the moment, the pre-order in the UK on Steam is $49.99. That's quite a lot of money, but I can see that a lot of effort has gone into the game. It's not without its jankiness in places. You know, I have picked up on a few bugs, and I do know that this is obviously is a beta, and that's the whole point, is kind of fixing these bugs. One of the bugs that I found was uh, the zombies getting stuck in walls. I've noticed them clipping through walls they can't get through. And if you are playing solo, and even though the solo playthrough isn't available at the moment um, on the beta, but if people leave partway through your playthrough, then the bots load in. And I have noticed that the bots, if you've got a minigun or you put a mini gun turret down, and one of them goes on that. When you try and progress through to the next level, they just stay on it. They don't get off it, which means when you get to the safe area and you need to close the door to finish that section, they're still miles away on the minigun. And that for me was a little bit frustrating. And I also noticed that if you was to go down and need reviving, that sometimes the AI don't revive you. You know, they, they will just kind of stand there shooting the zombies and, and not care about you being down until you bleed out. But they'll revive each other absolutely fine. So if an AI goes down, an AI will go and revive it. Uh, maybe the AIs don't like humans. Maybe this is their way of slowly trying to take over against humanity. Who knows? But I did ask the question at the beginning of the video, how bad is Back for Blood? I have to say... It's not bad at all. I've had a lot of fun playing through this first act. I'm excited to see more about the game, despite its few imperfections in places. I just think the game looks gorgeous. The level design is good. And like I've said, the gunplay is really, really good. And for this game, that has to be one of its solid foundations, it has to be the combat and the gunplay. So if you haven't checked out Back for Blood yet, you might still have enough time to jump on whatever console you're playing on or PC. Download and check out the open beta. It is cross-play, so you can play with people on other platforms, which is great as well. I think it's just uh, breaking down barriers against people who play on Xbox and PlayStation. They can come together now and play together, which is great. And the same with PC players being able to play with people on console as well. So if you've enjoyed this video, just taking a quick look at Back for Blood and how I feel about the game so far, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on another video. Thanks for watching.